G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I've got a quick tutorial on a topic which confuses a lot of Dynamo users, especially when they're newer to the software, and that is in this case, list levels. Now, it's very hard to teach list levels. It's one of those concepts where until you get it, it's pretty hard to use them, but once you know how it works, you'll find yourself going to it all the time. Effectively, levels are how we instruct Dynamo to tell elements to work across different areas of a list, when it has sublists or whether it's a list itself. So for example, if you're trying to apply a whole set of things to one particular element in a list, you can use levels to instruct Dynamo to associate various pieces of parallel or non-parallel lists to each other. So in this case, I'm just going to show you some fundamental techniques I like to use in order to help people better understand levels um, that usually help sort of create that eureka moment where they sort of understand the principle um, using a few basic examples. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Christopher Hansen in this case who um, actually asked me this question on Twitter and I had a good little discussion with him about levels and gave him some tips and tricks. Um, and I'd like to just share those with more people as well because I think they're really valuable. Anyway, um, let's jump in. So this is sort of just going to serve like a figurative lesson. We're not really using a model today. Um, we're just looking at lists and how they interact using levels. So I'm going to begin by creating a range um, and another range. So if you don't know how to create a range in a code block, um, this is a lesson for you as well, I guess. Let's say we want to make a range from one to five with a step of one. I can type in the first element, the last element, and the, the distance between each, which is one. This will actually generate a range for me without needing to use the range node. Super helpful. Let's also generate a list of alphabetical characters um, using the same method. So I'm going to make one for A, one for B with a step of one. Actually E, sorry, the fifth character. And there we go. We can see we have a list of five elements. Now my favorite node in order to teach the concept of levels is the add item to front node. It's a really clear and easy way to understand how levels work. So if I do add item to front, uh, I'll look for front instead. Gotta love that search tool in Dynamo. Um, so in this case, let's say I wanna add each letter to the front of each of these numbers, or maybe I wanna add it to the start of each sequence of numbers. I'm gonna use a few combinations of levels to do this. Let's just do the normal outcome and see what we get. So I'm gonna use a watch node just to watch the outcome. And at the moment, we have a list sitting on front of the list as an object, as an index. Now this makes sense technically, because we're saying add this whole thing to the front of this list. So in this case, that's what we get. Well, let's say we want to instead maybe work with levels. Well, I can see if I go to at level two, it doesn't really make any sense. Likewise, at level one, not really an ideal outcome. But what I'm going to do is just explain the principle of levels by activating the level input for level one here. Now, look, we've got a very different outcome here. So in this case, we have A added to the front of the list, B added to the front of the list, C, D, and E. So this might be an ideal outcome. Let's say you want to add a header to a list of columns going into Excel. This is the method I would typically use. Now, what's actually happening here? Well, let's have a look at this. So inside the list structure, we have levels. We have level two, which is the list, and we have level one, which is the element. Likewise, over here, we have the same thing. Now, what I'm doing here could effectively be done the same way using level two and setting it to longest lacing. Oops. So I'm gonna do this just to make levels clearer to understand. There is some default behavior that lists will assume. Um, if you're feeding in something at level two, it's gonna use it at level two in most cases. But what I'm saying here is use the list at level two. So take the list, but then I'm saying take each element in this one and put them together. So I'm doing A, I'm taking the list, B, taking the list, C, etc. So this is level one and this is level two. I'm setting it to longest lacing because by default, it's assuming a shortest lacing pattern for that combination of elements. If I go back to longest, I can see now that the element at level one is placed in front of the list at level two. The list in level one, the list at level two. So I can combine these things in a different way by instructing the element to work across the list. I like to usually use um, for this in that to sort of describe what's happening. So I'll say for each element, take this list and do something. And that's how they sort of line up to each other. I can also do something like this, or sorry, like this. I can do both at level one, so for each element, do something for each other element in this list. So in this case, I'm getting A1, B2, C3, D4, and E5. Um, a really useful outcome as well. Let's say you wanna work across two lists. Um, so in this case, you can see that a really effective outcome has been achieved using just one node in this case. There are other ways that we could achieve the same outcome. 
Um, for example, we could you know transpose a combined version of those two lists put together. But we're using two nodes to do this, and we're not really able to do it with a predictable list length either. But this would achieve a similar outcome without using levels. So we're taking the list, flipping it over, and that's our result. But um, if we had, say, three inputs, it wouldn't really work. So in this case, um, it's a way to sort of work with scalable list structure as well. Now let's take a really common example where levels are really useful. Let's take um, maybe just a couple of walls in the model. I might in this case just actually select like three walls. And let's say we want to set the values of a few of their parameters. So in this case, I'm just going to minimize Dynamo a bit. Now I'm just in the basic sample project here, that, that good old ugly house that we all like to use. Um, in this case, I'm just going to take three walls. So I'm going to select a wall. I'm going to select another wall. And I'll just select one more wall. Now usually you'd probably be collecting your elements in a more efficient manner. Um, I'm just doing this to create like a figurative exercise. And we're going to try and set multiple parameters to multiple values across the elements. But we're going to try and just use one element set parameter node. But I'll show you the inefficient way that people use first. So we have our list of elements. And in this case, we're going to use a element set parameter by name to set parameters. Now what some people might do, let's say they're setting three parameters. They might do something like this. And they might take the element each time. We might have three sets of values. So in this case, let's say the first thing we're setting is mark. Uh, the next thing we're setting is comments. And the final thing we're setting is the top offset. So we might take three parameter names as well and individually hook those up as well. And finally, we need three lists of values. So in this case, I'll make one list with uh, just maybe uh, A, B, C. I'll make another list um, with one, two, and three for the comments. And finally, for the top offset, I'll just make a list with 100, 200, 300. So it's a very inefficient method to achieve such an outcome. And it works. Technically, you know, we get... um. We get a, a mark, a comment, and a top offset. Um, but at the same time, this, this really doesn't scale. Let's say I've got a fourth wall in here. Well, I'm really not going to want to have to use a list create to put these together each time. Let's look at using levels instead. So we're really going to simplify down this workflow. So I'm going to just keep one element set parameter by name node. I'm going to disconnect for now these inputs. Now what I'm going to do is make a list of lists here instead. And I'm actually probably going to transpose the, income, the, the, um, the result as well. So here we've got our set of values and I can transpose them so that the, the, para the parameters line up to the values. So in this case we have uh, the mark, the comment and the top offset for the first element, the second and the third. Usually this would probably be coming from something like Excel maybe, um, but in this case I've just sort of simulated that list structure manually. So let's say this is our data and now we have our parameters. Well let's turn this into a list of parameter names. Now this could be something like your Excel headers maybe. Um, the point is that we have a list that can scale in size. Now in this case, I'm just going to switch over to, I'll, go, I'll stay in automatic mode and just expand the contents of the node. So if I take in this case the parameter name and the values, well, we can see in this case it's not working. So it's actually working across the elements. So what, what it's doing eventually I think is actually trying to set the wrong values to the wrong things. So in this case we can see that A and 1 is not correct. What it's done is it set the comment and the mark. So it's working across the elements in the wrong order. We're going to use levels to fix this. So let's have a think about what we want this to look like. So we'll look at our parameters, we'll look at our elements, and then we'll finally look at our data. So our elements, we're going to want to work across each one in order. So we're going to want to work across this at level one. We're going to go one element at a time. We're going to work across the parameters a list at a time. So in this case, we want to work at level two. We also want to work across the lists here as they line up to the elements as well. So we're also going to work at level two. Now it's going to switch over to shortest lacing. So we also want to switch over to longest lacing to force it to work across each element. And now we can see we've had a successful outcome with a scalable result. So if I check now, I can see one and A 
And I can also see my top offset. I can check the other wall, 200, 2 and B. And finally, 3 and C and 300. So we can see that we've created the scalable outcome using just one set parameter named by node for multiple elements with multiple values across multiple parameters. It's far more streamlined. And if I add, say, another set of data, such as base offset, to my incoming parameter names, and then I just create another list in here for those values. In this case, it's gonna have a couple of errors in Revit, unfortunately. Um, it looks like one of our walls has just been taken out. <laughs> but in this case, we can see that we have at least added another parameter to the mix. It's gonna have deleted one of those walls, whatever. Um, but check it out, we've now added another parameter in so we can create scalable data sets from programs like Excel um, with multiple number of numbers of headers to be received by, by Dynamo. And we don't have to add extra branches of set parameter by name nodes, which is really great. Um, so I think that's probably the clearest way that I can, I can convey levels to users. It is difficult to learn though, uh, but that's probably the clearest technique I like to use. So I hope that this has sort of cleared up um, your understanding of levels to some degree. And I do encourage you to introduce them into your workflows when you're So there we go, um, a pretty powerful function that I haven't seen in any custom packages before um, that's now available in my own custom package, uh, Crumple. It's not currently on the package manager in this version at this time, but you can access it on my GitHub if you want a sneak peek, um, but in the next official release, it will be in there. I try not to do too many releases because I'm a Python based package. So I know that updates can be quite annoying because you do have to swap the nodes out, unlike a zero touch package. Um, anyway, hopefully that taught you more about Python. Remember there is a playlist over on my channel where you can learn about Python and also one where you can learn about Dynamo and Python. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you on future similar videos. Thanks, take care, bye.